Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan with the very popular 3,245 pound as we see it here today, Rockwood 19 BH Geo Pro. And this thing is a spectacle. I swear what Rockwood does is they say, let me make a list of everybody else who makes this floor plan ever in the history of ever. Okay, so Jayco has a 174 BH, Wolf Pup has a 16 BHS, and etc. You get the idea. And they say, I'm gonna make a list of every single cool thing they do. Now hold my beer, baby. I'm gonna mash it all into one camper. That's what you get here. It's it's the same size, same layout, as you see a hundred times in the RV industry. It just has appointments and equipment packages and things that other campers like this never dreamed of touching. For instance, we've got double uh, Asdell laminated sidewalls. We've got a factory standard 190 watt roof solar package and 1000 watt inverter that can run every normal accessible household outlet in this. Now that's not the kind of inverter and solar that's gonna run air conditioner and microwave. You need to bulk up a little bit for that. But for, for basically virtually indefinite 12 volt use when you're primitive camping, this is going to work very, very nicely. I think it's like a 5.3 cubic foot, 12 volt DC compressor fridge, a fast cooling travel safe refrigerator. That you can add another 190 watt panel onto this to bulk up your solar even further. It's got that sweet griddle station uh, now standard uh, sport tire and wheel package with like a three inch lift on it. Tank heaters are now standard. The roof ladder is now standard. The big vent fan in the bathroom. It's just like, just bullet points. Everything that everybody else has ever done. And they're just like, bam, do it all, all in one. The flip side, is there's two kind of hiccups with that. One, this is not the least expensive little trailer you're ever going to run into. Two, there's a couple little areas where sometimes they do so much that they almost trip over themselves and their features fight with one another. I'll show you what I mean. And for some reason lately here, I kind of like to start things from the position of what I sort of feel is the primary seat. I like to put you in the driver's seat. Like here's the actual point of view from being in the RV. I can stuff myself up into a corner on that bed and, and I can make this thing look amazing. Now I don't use wide angle fisheye lenses. Uh, which kind of makes the RV look smaller than it really is. So kind of keep that in mind. But just to give you some perspective, like when you're sitting at the dinette, you have a really good look out of your campsite. Notice the entry door doesn't just have a window. Thank you, Rockwood. You do something I just harp about all the time. They give us a full shade in the entry door. Not to mention, you got the windshield up front because that is actually a thicker type of glass. And uh, the windows on the side. I mean, this thing has window coverage everywhere which makes it look and feel nice and bright you can see the light colors you can see the uh, the carpetless ventless floor plan it it's it's small without feeling terribly small now once again uh you know i i i, I could go like this and be like wow look at this thing guys but i don't like doing that i like you to kind of see something a little bit more of how it really looks so keep that in mind in this camper it just doesn't always look as impressive. Now, a couple things I want to showcase for you here. Uh, first of all, up top, we've got a full 13,500 BTU air conditioner. That will be uh, something you're really going to want in those hotter climates. And uh, speaking of hotter, it is, I'm going to flip the camera around on you here again, but um, <laughs> it is, uh, it's hotter in the dickens in these things. But what I want to show you is that at my height, at about 6'3", with my hand over my head, I can cleanly walk under that air conditioner without you know, bumping my nugget and taking a, uh, a a chunk out of my head, which I do, frankly, fairly often. That was a fantastic face freeze when the camera flipped around right there, wasn't it? Okay, over here, our entertainment center in this is, I, I think, in a really good position. It's across from what I think would be the headboard of the bed or uh, the dinette, you know? The TV can pivot around. It locks in place for transit. But you see that little red cable back there. That is actually a 12 volt plug because this is either a 110 or a 12 volt powered TV, but it does have a built-in DVD player, which is cool because up top here, you have just a Bluetooth stereo. You do see though that you also have the uh, the little Wi-Fi Ranger job. That's that little switch. The RV has a built-in signal access point. It's gonna work the way most people realize, kind of like a router if you're not familiar with that. Um, now over here in the headboard, uh, let, me, let me back up a little bit. This is not a true queen bed. That's going to be a problem for some people. That being said, if you want to, it would you're, you're going to have to do a little bit of doing, basically. But the headboard theoretically could be removed. Now, you see you've got the pop-up power tower there. 
you'd have to relocate that or sacrifice it if you wanted to put a longer 80 inch true queen length in here but that is theoretically possible on one of these now pardon me a little bit to uh give you a better look at this i gotta kind of lay back and sit on the bed and crawl around a touch so i gotta kick off my shoes up top here above the dinette you see you've got nice full storage under there but as we work our way down that folds down into another sleeper plus notice that you have a ladder for the bunks back there that's something that's one of those i call them rockwood doing rockwood things those extra nice little touches that you get in rockwoods that you just don't get everywhere now this is smart all day long i think the table brackets against the wall and then it has a single pedestal base the bed, uh, pedestal base is all the way at the tip of the table, which means you can actually like push your hand on it to, to you know, plant yourself and stand up. And speaking of planting myself and standing up, I feel like a turtle on my back. There's no way I'm gonna get up here. Hold on. Okay, there we go, had to move. <laughs> Still working on peeling off those pandemic pounds. Happening slow, but sure. Now, a couple key notes for you over here. We're going to get all this storage opened up in just a second. I want to let you know that you do have an option for a propane uh, oven as well as a convection microwave. One of the things that's standard on here, though, uh, is if you look at the uh, command panel, it actually, uh, it's nice that it just has buttons for everything, but it also reveals a couple of the, the more hidden features on this, specifically the uh, tank heaters, which are now standard. That used to be optional. Uh, also, the fact that like, all of our main cabin lights are just on one switch here, but we can still clickety-clack them, which is a, a technical term, obviously. It also helps when I actually point the camera at the thing that I'm uh, displaying. I feel that it gives you a little bit, you know, better understanding of that stuff, but uh, hey, whatever. Now, the other thing that you can do here, which is kind of cool, is you can grab your phone and you can Bluetooth uh, right to that command panel. So if you want to be Fancy Pants R2-D2 digital, you can, but you don't have to be. Now, they utilized every little nook and cranny they could for storage on this, but it's going to take me a couple passes because it... Remember how I said Rockwood kind of gets in its way sometimes? Well, well, this is one of those things. Now, I'm not complaining about more storage versus less, but what I'm getting at is like they have drawers below the dinette. They have drawers below the bed. You can't have them open at the same time, but I don't know that that's necessarily a really big deal feature. I mean, is that a problem for you? I don't think so. And the dinette drawers here from the other direction, which again is very cool that they just have drawers that you don't, it, it, I mean, even better than doors. I think you don't have to take stuff apart. You don't have to crawl on your hands and knees. The storage comes out to you. Another little thing here, you see that little black box next to that drawer on the inside of the dinette? That is the activation switch for the inverter. So if you are camping off grid, and let's say you'd want to run a fan or a CPAP machine or something like that, you can activate that to keep those uh, household outlets on that power tower or any of the outlets in the RV, uh, uh, you know, activated effectively. Now, I, we look, I don't know if I opened that up up here. I can't remember. When I'm doing these videos, sometimes I get interrupted like uh, eight times between segments, and that has definitely been the case today. And we find ourselves over here uh, once again, uh, giving you a look at, again, all the little different pockets of storage. Now, they do, they I think that's a decent size fridge. It's like 5.3 cubic foot or something like that. I never remember the size of that fridge. But they purposely don't do a giant refrigerator so that uh, you don't, you know, accidentally totally destroy your battery capacity and again you have the option of a propane oven but you lose a huge chunk of storage down there um now i haven't really pointed it out but you do see there's some household outlets on the side of the kitchen countertop there uh this camper let's you know it does it does a lot of things but there's just not enough space in here for good counter space if we're just being frank and I, I hope you appreciate little points like that. I had to take a little break there between segments to put my shoes back on. While I was crawling around on the mattress, I, I didn't want to have my shoes, you know, grinding dirt into somebody else's bedspread. I don't know if you saw it, but when we were looking at storage, obviously you got doors down there to open that up. But notice a couple little details here. Like the fact that each bunk has its own individual curtain space, which is very cool. You still got the same night roller shades in here. That does open for airflow. And around the corner, through the river, over the river and through the woods, to USB's house we go with some household outlets there as well. 
Plus, each bunk has its own individual uh, lights. Now, some people will ask, why is the door slotted? I hate that. Well, there's a reason for it. By the way, I've never done this. I don't know that that's really a bad place to store that ladder. If you're going to travel with it like that, though, I would definitely, like, hang a dish rag or something over it so it's not constantly eating into the door. But when you're stationary, I think that probably works fine. If nothing else, you can always just lay it on top of one of the bunks, or you can put it down inside that cargo space. Whatever works for you. Anyway, uh, the door uh, is slotted. So that if you want fresh air rolling through this RV, you can turn on that big whole house vent fan and it will pull in air uh, from the outside from all of the windows that open for airflow here, which is literally everything except the windshield and the window in the door and create like a constant five mile an hour breeze through the RV. It works very well and you can leave the door shut while it does that. So while we exist, and when I'm breathing, I'm creating tons of hot air in here, it all rises. So you create a thermal blanket in the ceiling, and with this being a vaulted ceiling, it pools in the middle, which gets sucked out of the bathroom door and then exhausted out through the bathroom fan. That's why it's that way. Um, porcelain foot flush stool in a little trailer like this. You're going to find this bathroom, it's the same size as a lot of other brands, but holy cow, I almost said holy crap. That would be... Well, I guess I did say it now, didn't I? Anyway, holy crap, it's a nice bathroom, Batman. <laughs> what began as an unintentional pun became an intentional pun. Decent leg room around this, which is one of the things I really like on here. But what I was getting is all the little details, like an actual switch for the lights, the little uh, toothbrush holder kind of mini shelf back there, a, uh, a mirror so you can kind of comb your hair, or maybe not, I don't know, to see what you look like before the neighbors do. And you notice on my little, uh, you know, I'm on the toilet selfie champion picture over here. My head doesn't clock that thing, even though I'm tall. We already talked about the big vent fan. And again, being brutally honest, kind of like I was about the kitchen counter, the headroom in this shower for a taller person like me leaves a little bit to be desired. But that doesn't necessarily bother me too awful much because I'm not coming in here to spend any more time than I have to. If I got to duck a little bit to take a shower, and then I'll duck a little bit to take a shower. You might notice it's a tub, which in a bunkhouse model makes a lot of sense, but you find that in a lot of Geo Pros. Um, I think it's to keep the shower curtain under control. If you're boondocking, you're going to love this guy, the shower miser. While you're waiting for your water to heat up, you don't have to waste any of it because this will recycle it back into your fresh water tank. And this little elbow joint here will turn from blue to white when it's like shower heat ready, basically. Now, some folks like this, some folks can't stand it. I think they did the best they could with the space they had. This little corner mini sink over here. Notice though, it does have a like completely separate sort of faucet system from the shower. It's one of those extra details that they put into this one. It's simple, it's effective, it's deep enough to get your hands in. And I would say it's a good place to use as like a, a, a shampoo uh, bottle bucket. But Rockwood gives us these handy little shower caddies over here, which are removable if you need to take them off to clean them. It's it's just, it's a, it's it's like a death by a thousand cuts. It's a ton of little things they do. Now the first thing you want to do out here is actually begin with a retraction. I've said for years, Rockwoods have this weird, GeoPros have this weird seven foot four body width. Well, that's right and it's not. They're seven foot four wide if you look at the fender flares, the axles, the body is seven foot wide, which means the axle does with those bigger tires technically stick out of the body uh, a little bit, which maybe that's one of the nicer towing factors on this. It's one of the things that adds a little more stability. Think about it. If your feet are wider than your shoulders, you're going to be nice and sturdy. If they're more narrow than your shoulders, you're going to tip over, you know, like I've had two Coors lights. I fall over like nothing. Anyway, uh, enough about me. Um, <laughs> uh, you're gonna find like bigger RV, like mini light features here on this little trailer, like uh, a double propane tank set up with an auto changeover regulator. And look at this little uh, extra bonus feature that they include here. They have both the wheel to be able to hand park these like in your garage, as well as the foot pad for extra stability. So you just pull that pin, you choose which foot you want on that power jack, and there you go. Power jack's another thing that's become standard. Up front next to that uh, baggage compartment, by the way, there's a simple side mount solar prep plug. Plus this RV has the standard roof solar. Now you can expand the roof solar. You can also use that side prep plug simultaneously. So if you just wanna get all kinds of solar pumping into this thing, 
she's already factory equipped to do that. You know, you don't even have to be like an electrical engineering wiring expert or nothing like that. It's just barely, it's like 20 foot, eight inches tip to tail or something like that. Nice, short, easy to manage. Um, the uh, entry door right here, because this is a little bit more of an outdoorsy camper. I don't know that I, I want to call it like a true off-road camper. Um, it doesn't have like a trailing arm suspension or something, but I think some people are going to want to do things like add a bike rack or, or go kayaking or whatever. The little uh, touchpad on the deadbolt right there, you can put a programmable uh, code in that so you don't got to worry about accidentally losing your keys out of your pocket or something. Little things like that are just really handy. Now, the bigger tire package uh, still comes with the, uh, the TPMS system. So this has a factory installed tire pressure monitor. You see the spare tire located uh, over there under the belly below those uh, easy adjust leg stable steps. By the way, also next to that tire, you might notice a little sewer hose tube uh, in there. I plan to talk about that on the other side, but hey, while we're looking at it. Now there's a gas grill quick connect just behind that tire. And wouldn't you know it, Rockwood includes a nice little griddle station here for you, complete with the little rolled steel galvanized uh, kind of work table, prep table, pl uh, little platter placement plateau, if we will, using some alliteration. Thank you, Mrs. Forrester, for teaching me all about things like alliteration. Uh, I I'm sure she she's actually uh, local. Uh, my, my high school English teacher is also one of our customers here at Halet RV, and I I'm sure she probably rolls her eyes every time I, I make up a silly word and goes, please don't tell people you learned that from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the right-hand taillight. There's a uh, black tank flush right there. And the RV has an outside shower uh, up there by the water heater, uh, which has hot and cold. So again, bigger features here on a smaller trailer. We're gonna use that ladder to get up to the roof in just a minute, but did you notice it actually has a ladder? There's actually a thing going around in the RV industry right now where some ladders have been kind of hard to come by. Some manufacturers have said, eh, we're just not gonna do them. Rockwood said, <laughs> BS, our people need ladders. We want ladders, give them a ladder. That by the way, it's a deadbolting anti-slam door. So uh, you have to flip it pretty hard like I did there to get it to latch, but it has to go real hard to bang against the side of the trailer. Um, and you could obviously deadbolt for security's sake. And uh, oh, one of the things I was going to say, you remember how I said sometimes Rockwood gets in their way a little bit? The bunk mattresses that they use are actually so thick, you have to take the bunk mattress off to flip that cargo bunk up. <laughs> that is not a problem held by many trailers, but Rockwood tries to go so far and so hard and do so many things every time that occasionally they just kind of trip themselves up. But I don't know, I, I think that's a very good problem to have, kind of like a full front pass-through compartment on a little trailer like this. And did you notice, we've got all frameless windows and even uh, magnet holdback on that baggage door right there. Well, both, side, both baggage doors on both sides of the RV. Again, very highly appointed. Now, I would love some feedback. What do you think about their new asymmetrical decal package? Normally, I like symmetry. I kind of like this, too. Now, Rockwood's roof work is always pretty much second to none. Their roofing uh, is very interesting. It's actually two, two and a half inch vaulted laminated sections that are married in the middle where all the aluminum meets, they lag everything together. It's very different, but it's what lets us have a six foot one sidewall while still maintaining basically a six and a half foot interior height for all intents and purposes. Although obviously I showed you in the shower, it does get a little low there. I never, I always want to point out the, the good and the bad so that you make sure you're getting the right camper for you. Now back here, you see you've got the big Max Air vent fan cover. Um, now normally these would come with a low profile air conditioner. Those have unfortunately been a little bit difficult to come by. So the one we're looking at today is a non low profile air. I think you add three or four inches on top of the specs posted at the start of the video for that, by the way. And then again, you've got the standard 190 watt roof solar package on this with thousand watt inverter. And remember, you do also have the option of adding an additional uh, 190 watt panel, either aftermarket or from the factory. Plus you still have that portable solar side plug there. So even if you want to park in the shade, you can still leave some kind of panel out in the sun, chase the sun, move it through the day. Or if you're parked where there's full sun coverage, you're just gonna have all kinds of juice coming in. So let me know, how would you use this? Would you use this as a solo or a couples camper and just use that bunk space as like an awesome cargo uh, cavity? Would you use this as just a common family bunkhouse, which I think most people will, some combination in between? Like, I, I think that this is a camper that could have many 
varied possibilities and uses about it. It fits um, uh, very well within the mid-size pickup or tow package SUV kind of crowd. There's just so many good things. To but frankly, you don't have to have a small vehicle to like one of these. There's plenty of people like, no, I got a half ton to three quarter ton truck. I just don't need or want a giant camper, but I want something nice. And I've seen how those Rockwoods are built. Which, by the way, if you'd like to see how GeoPro specifically are put together, I will leave you a link in the video description. I have personally recorded a uh, factory video tour of the GeoPro facility where you get to see things like their new heavier duty plywood floor coming together versus the OSB floor they used to use. That's, that's the thing. People keep going, these things used to weigh like 2,800 pounds. They've bulked up a little bit. They have. Some of that is equipment. Some of that is structure. Rockwood is continuing to monitor the feedback they get from ownerships. Uh, from ownership from owners I combine the two it perks fits and works you get the idea this is how the nerdisms come about I say something dumb and go <laughs> we're doing it live stone cold Steve Austin which I don't know why I just said that regardless you get the idea when you're ready we're ready we'd love to work with you um, let me know what you like what you dislike what you change given the opportunity anything else we can do for you and I've, uh, I always leave you a link in the video description where you can check current pricing and availability at your leisure you never have to pick up the phone so if that sounds good, hit that subscribe button, follow along. We do everything we can for you here at Halid RV, including no hidden dealer fees. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halid camping, everyone.